Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm going to be making a video uh, that I've been meaning to make for a while. Uh, it's been on my to-do list. Other stuff has gotten in the way of doing it. Uh, I've been meaning to do this for almost six months now, I think. Back when I was welding the exhaust on the GTI was when I thought of doing this video, and uh, now I'm finally getting around to doing it. So uh, we're going to be talking about my back purge setup tonight which is this black hose here in this tangle of cords um that i use when i am welding stainless steel so if you remember and if you've been around for a little while i did a video not that long ago well a while ago actually on making this dual flow meter setup um and this is kind of the next step of that where you know it's going from the flow meter over to the uh actual tubing that you're going to be welding so i'm going to break this uh back purge setup apart into the pieces that i bought that way i can talk to you about what you need if you want to do this project as well So truly at the end of the day, this is all you need. So this is the flow meter to a hose barb adapter. This is the nut that holds that onto the flow meter. Uh, I don't truly believe that you actually need this, but I put it in just to give the end of the hose some rigidity. Um, but this is just a hose barb to hose barb adapter. It's nothing special. Um, these are two, two uh, hose clamps that I just happen to have lying around. And then however long of basically vacuum line. This is air hose. Um, all four of those components, the air hose, two hose adapters, and the nut came from McMaster Car. Um, I'll put the product numbers in the description. Um, and then, like I said, I just had these sitting around. So... It's really nothing that's all that special, um, but for whatever reason, people like do not talk about how to get from point A being the flow meter, how to get from the flow meter to the actual pipe. That's just like this unspoken thing. I could not find any information about it on Google when I was looking for all this stuff back in, you know, April or whatever. Um, so like figured I'd put this together that way if somebody else is out there struggling trying to figure out how to back purge stainless and can't find all the information uh this is basically a tutorial for you so um I'm going to put this stuff back together and then show you the last little bit of how I uh utilize this whole setup Pro tip here, spray some lubricant in the hoses. That way you don't struggle like I am right now uh, trying to put these hose barbs into the airline. So simple green, WD-40, anything that you know lubricates rubber would be great. Uh, I just didn't have the forethought to do that before I recorded this. So now that it's all back together, the last piece of this puzzle is tinfoil. 
Um, you don't have to be extra like me and get the freaking Costco value pack uh, of Reynolds wrap of all things. Um, the great value brand works just fine. Any cheap tin foil, um, just be warned. Uh, if you have a wife, fiance, girlfriend, significant other of any kind, uh, that does not enjoy the garage, uh, and likes to cook, she or he, uh, may not be, uh, too happy about you taking the tinfoil out to the garage all the time. So, uh, remember to bring this back in, uh, that way said significant other does not uh, kick you out of the house or even worse. Um, I am not uh, liable for your mistakes. So uh, with that said though, I'm going to mock up this little uh, elbow that I have here. Um, I'm not actually welding anything. I'm just gonna show you guys how I use this setup and uh, stuff the tin foil into it that way you guys have a complete idea of the total picture of what I'm trying to do with this and uh, after that I'm gonna go through a few things that I wish I would have done differently that way you may improve upon what I already did so So I had this tin foil laying around from the last job that I did, so it's already scrunched up into a ball pretty well, but if you're using like fresh tin foil, all you need to do is scrunch it up as much as you can and then wrap it around the hose. You want to leave the hose barb or the end of your hose if you're not using a barb sticking out of your tin foil at least like a quarter inch. Uh, that way you know that you're not clogging the end of it and have like a nice smooth flow of argon out of that uh, airline. But uh, otherwise, then it's just uh, plugging up the end of the tubing that you're using well enough um, and then wrapping some tin foil around all the uh, outlets to try and contain the argon as much as possible and not just let the argon free, free flow out of the end of the tube. So that is my back perch setup, uh, all complete. So you'll notice in that video, I left the hose barb sticking out of the end of the ball of tin foil that I put in this end. Um, that way, you know, you have good flow coming out of that hose barb. And then this end, uh, you want to leave it kind of open. So I don't know how well you can see that, but there is a ball of tin foil that I shoved in the end before I wrapped this around the edge. Um, that's kind of just to um, slow the flow of argon out of the tube. So um, obviously you want to hold argon within the tube. So if you just leave the one end open, it's just going to flow right through. So you have to cap the one end, but you need it to still breathe. You don't want to pressurize what you're welding or else when you get to the end of your weld, uh, you're going to have a really bad time because it's going to actually blow your puddle out towards you and that's not fun. Um, but let me uh, turn my bottle on and we'll kind of go through that procedure a little bit. You just crack the bottle here. You can see you got pressure now. Um, so in order to uh, use this, so it's just this knob to adjust the flow meter and I'll just crack it open real quick, maybe. And you can see the ball rise and you might be able to hear it start flowing. Um, so like to back purge 
you want to hit like 10 ish um cfh i believe it's cfh is the unit for that um but that way you fill this cavity really quickly then once you know it's full the easy way to tell is argon is cold um, so if you just feel the end that you're venting out of if you can feel that it's cold you know that you have argon coming out of the end of it and then from there you can lower this to a really low flow rate uh, so i just lowered it to about four um, you don't need to be pushing a whole bunch of argon into this pipe you're just wasting gas at that point so um, fill it up with a high higher flow rate not as high as even what you're welding with um, fill it up with that then once you can feel that it's full lower your uh, flow rate down to you know practically a fifth of it if you can at least a quarters a quarter of what you were flowing to start out with so you know I was at 10 now I'm down at four I could really go down to like two or three um, but it doesn't matter and then the only other thing that you want to pay attention to while you're doing this is you want to keep the end that you're venting high so argon is uh, heavy in the sense of if you have like a weld seam here on the side here I'll turn a little bit if you have a weld seam like here like if you're doing pie cuts it's gonna fall out of the bottom of that pie um, so it you know just like any other gas it takes the path path of least resistance um, so if it falls out of that at the bottom you're not gonna be back purging your uh, tube anymore you're going to end up having sugar on the inside of your welds if you're welding stainless um, and that's not good so you need to remember that while you're uh, while you're welding that way you position your pipe correctly as you go um, the only problem with that is sometimes you have to weld in even more uncomfortable positions than what you would if you weren't back purging um, or you can just say screw it and you know you'll back purge most of the way and there might be a little bit of sugar on the inside of the pipe but um, to each their own one thing to note if uh, you are planning to do this so I did this with 3 16th hose barbs for everything so off the flow meter is the 3 16th hose, hose barb it's 3 16th hose to another 3 16th hose barb uh, that is what I stick into the pipe the one issue with that and the one regret that I have is I wish I would have done quarter inch the reason for that is if you ever have looked into the TIG Aesthetics purge plug kits those have six millimeter uh, barb bungs uh, on them so six millimeters is about a quarter inch so if I went with a quarter of an inch I wouldn't have to redo this setup if I ever did buy purge plugs uh, I would just be able to take the hose barb out of the end of uh, this hose pop it onto the end of the uh, purge plugs hose barb and I'd be ready to go so um, that's one thing that I wish I did and that's one thing that you guys can do if you follow along with this uh, buy quarter inch hose barb stuff I'll uh, put all the part numbers off of McMaster car for that as well in the description below I'll try and make sure that I label them well that way you guys know uh, which one's which and don't get them mixed up but uh, that's gonna wrap up this video I hope that you found it uh, helpful and I hope that you know it helps somebody out there in the future if it helped you uh, leave a like or leave a comment either one um, and if you want to see more stuff like this uh, subscribe to the channel if you already subscribed to the channel thank you for doing that and we'll see everybody next time